when you're coming from it from the neo-Darwinistic genetic determinism model, what you basically are left with is that whatever whatever we are genetically determined and adapted toward is ideal. So, and any variation from that is not ideal, that is worse. And that's because we randomly got to wherever we are now genetically, and we had an environment that was compatible with that. And so we, because, because of that, we're stuck with whatever was kind of evolutionarily determined through this genetic determinism model. And if that didn't involve a lot of carbohydrates or it involved a lot of fasting, that's what we have to stick with because that's what our optimal health was built around. As opposed to a view that involves a two-way street between the environment and genetics and heredity and evolution, where the availability of things in the environment, the changes in the environment, the energetic availability of the environment had a has a directing input in terms of what's going on genetically and hereditarily and evolutionarily. Where if we were in an environment that could have supported greater brain function and for long enough, it would allow for greater brain function over time, greater complexity, and that will lead to shifts in terms of epigenetics and genetics and on from there and actually shifts in terms of speciation and and evolution. And so if you're, and so we, again, without, this is like a huge, huge discussion. We've talked about doing a series on these different views of evolution before, and we certainly will, uh, but it's way too much to kind of dig into now, but just kind of sharing here, there's not an ignorance of evolution. It's rather just some differences in perspective here. And to be at least a little bit more specific and provide an example or two and some evidence to support it, Basically, the idea that we're suggesting in terms of carbohydrates is that having an energy-rich uh, environment that allows for us to produce a lot of energy that involves carbohydrates is something that, A, was key in the development of where we are now and having large brains and all of that, but also is something that allows us to further complexify and improve along those lines. Even if, let's say, for for all of the development, and this likely was not true, but let's say for all of development, we only had 100 grams of carbohydrates available for, for day per day from fruit. Now, if we have 200 grams available, that doesn't make that worse. It actually could mean that that could allow us to continue to improve in terms of complexity and function. So that, that's kind of the, the general piece here. But in terms of some more specifics, I do think it's also worth considering that when looking back at our lineage and our development and evolution, it likely was in an environment that was largely carbohydrate rich. Of course, we don't know exactly what things were going on, but based on the evidence now, I think that that can largely be argued. And there's a few reasons for that. The first couple that I'll say, so in the, and this is, uh, there's an article by Denise Minger and it dispels the idea that any fruit that was available in the past was very, very low in sugar and carbohydrates and discusses the fact that the wild fruits that would have been available actually were very dense in sugar. And so they actually would have provided a considerable carbohydrate source. Another piece that's not often talked about is honey. Uh, but when you look at modern day hunter gatherers, honey is a huge source of carbohydrates. There's a study, I'm not going to read the direct quote, but they look at, uh, I'll cite it, they, they look at all current hunter gatherers in warm climates and all of them except for one consume honey. The one that doesn't consume honey is because they're, they're in the Philippines and they spend most of their time on boats. So they can't really collect honey from the boats, but uh, <laughs> anyone else, like any other, uh, cultures that have honey available use honey as well as as a major carbohydrate source so those are two of the main sources that would have been available in terms of carbohydrates and when we consider that the vast majority of our evolutionary heritage occurred in tropical warm climates we would have had those things available ideally most likely year round and that you know when we consider the millions and millions of years of evolution through apes uh that were in which was humans and like other bipedal uh, organisms separated from chimpanzees between four and seven million years ago, according to you know the typical data now. So that's a really long time of development for us to have in these warm climates where there's likely carbohydrates available. And even with all that in mind, if we consider when there was actually the emergence of of modern day humans, which was estimated you know 300,000, 400,000 years ago, we really didn't leave any tropical warm areas until around 30,000 years ago. Is like is basically current estimates. So for the vast majority of our biological evolution, it was likely occurring in, in environments that were very carbohydrate rich. Uh, 